This is my territory, I'll defend it with pride So I close one eye in and just let it fly I popped them in the chest, they fell back a little So I aimed for their forehead and shot right in the middle Hi guys, Wayne here for the Let's Play Kit Gaming Channel and today I am going to be reviewing the brand new Zombie Apocalypse Simulation Experience from Undead Labs. This can only be the highly anticipated Xbox Live Arcade release, State of Decay. First announced as in development several years ago, State of Decay is available to purchase now via the Xbox Live Arcade for only 1,600 Microsoft points. As undeniably one of the most content-rich, in-depth, dynamically versatile and eerily realistic zombie apocalypse games out there, I sincerely recommend that you guys snatch up a bargain and play this absolutely flawless game sooner rather than later, and I promise each and every single person that views this review, you will certainly not be disappointed. Be sure to check the links in the description of this video to follow Undead Labs on Twitter, and visit the official State of Decay website for even more information on the game after this review. Waking up in a vast open world that has gone straight to undead hell, State of Decay lets the player originally take control of a single survivor, but from the very beginning, the game's amazing simulation experience is portrayed effortlessly. Before long, you will not only be learning the basic skills needed to survive this world, such as an emphasis on stealth, evasion, and both selecting and reinforcing your base, but you will quickly be thrown into the incredibly dynamic and versatile choice process when it comes to meeting other survivors. Gelling together concept from Telltale's The Walking Dead game and seemingly effortlessly portraying them in their own unique style, Undead Labs have, in State of Decay, done what Zombie Apocalypse game creators have been trying to do for a generation. Immerse you, the player, into a world where choice actually defines you as a person and the decisions you make alter not only you as a person and your game, but also the lives of the other survivors within the game too. You will meet plenty of other survivors and one of the game's most important features is how you choose to react and interact with these survivors. If you rescue them from all over this vast open world zombie adventure and you spend time building and nurturing relationships, you will become friends with these other survivors. Once you are friends, they will do favours for you, including going on foraging runs to look for supplies that can be used to build new things in the base such as medical tents and gardens and also reinforce your base walls to defend from undead armies. Not only that, once you become friends, you will even gain the option to switch characters. Switching characters is very important in State of Decay. While adventuring, your character can and will become both tired and injured if they are out too long or fall victim to zombie attacks. They will then need to return to the base to rest and relax. This is when switching characters becomes essential. While one of your characters is taking a breather, the other character you select can be controlled and go out to resume exploration and more importantly, resume collecting supplies to keep the base happy. Every survivor has their own different personality traits and characteristics, and every survivor you meet can and will come with their own benefits that aid the camp, and also their own negative traits that can cause relationship conflicts. Once again, it is all about how you choose to deal with the situations and how you choose to build, raise and nurture your growing camp of survivors. If one specific survivor is causing aggro and raising hell back at the base, there is nothing stopping you going out and getting that player killed to benefit the rest of the group. In a similar fashion, when you explore the world and you meet other groups of survivors, you can view their personality traits there and then, which once again comes back to the important decision making process. Is bringing that character back to your camp going to cause issues? If so, you have to make a choice. Do you risk bringing them back or do you leave them as zombie bay to make a quick exit? These are all choices you'll be forced to make in State of Decay and often, as survivors you meet are often about to fall victim to zombie hordes, you will also have to make them quickly. Of course, in sacrificing on recruiting a survivor due to them being annoying, conflictive or violent, what beneficial skills are you going to be missing out on? The survivor you kill may be a good builder or a good medic that can benefit the camp. The game forces you to constantly weigh up pros and cons when it comes to other survivors and more importantly, deciding their fates. The building process is otherworldly in State of Decay and this is something that will certainly appeal to real time strategy fans and realistic survival fans too. Once you have a base, you can reinforce your walls, your doors and your windows and it is very important to keep on top of regular maintenance just in case zombies attack. Once again, you will be able to recruit other survivors with specific traits who can help out the group once you build enough trust. For example, you will meet some survivors who may have been doctors or nurses before the Z apocalypse. These characters will enhance the medical tent whereas if you recruit someone who is a builder or a maintenance worker, this will aid the overall building process in general. 
Once again, it all comes down to the choices that you as an individual make. The survivors you bring back can and will impact the way your camp runs, and more importantly, how your camp grows as a survival safe haven or a constantly at-risk accident waiting to happen. Foraging for supplies is essential in State of Decay, and this is another of the game's flawless features that will aid your success or contribute to your failure in the zombie apocalypse. Players will find themselves on a daily basis heading out into the truly huge open world and exploring it for everything it has to offer. Almost every building you come across in the game you are able to get into and explore, which makes for literally limitless exploration and you will always find something new no matter where you go in the world. You can scout new areas simply by exploring or you can find high up vantage points which are reminiscent of the radio towers from Far Cry 3 in order to add new areas to your map. This will also increase your trust and influence over the other survivors back at the base. The more useful you are to the group, the more the group will trust you, which in turn means the more favours the rest of the group will do for you. There are countless buildings for you to find and explore in State of Decay, and each building has its own unique contents that are all relevant to the things that you need. If you find and forage places such as hospitals, for example, you are most likely going to find medical supplies to bring back to your base. Similarly, if you forage a fast food joint, you're most likely going to bring home some food. State of Decay boasts a huge, fascinating and very realistic world and just exploring it will leave you breathless, especially when you see just exactly how much the game's huge world has to offer and after playing for hours upon hours, you will still always go out and find new things each and every time. State of Decay also boasts a huge amount of weapons. Again focusing on realism, ammunition supplies will also be scarce so every bullet you fire has to matter. Do not waste bullets just for the sake of it and if you can get away with using a melee weapon, make sure you do. However, similarly, melee weapons can also become damaged and broken, so be sure to use care and caution when fighting in general and if a battle can be avoided, avoid it. For even more realism, your inventory space is also limited, so decide carefully on what you need to take out with you when you go out exploring and what you can leave back in storage at your base for the rest of the group. Also consider the things that you go out and forage for. The more you bring back for your group, again, the more your trust and influence with the group is going to grow. The game also boasts one of the most unique and amazing combat systems that the zombie genre has seen yet. Doing away with the first person shooter genre that has dominated the zombie apocalypse for a number of years, State of Decay instead focuses more on implementing a need to use stealth and savvy. If you see one zombie roaming around, chances are his buddies are going to pop up if you run ahead and make lots of noise. If you can avoid that zombie, avoid him. Do not make any unnecessary noise or you will attract the zombie hordes in the distance. On the map you will also see these zombie hordes in question. These zombie hordes are very important. A zombie horde can sometimes be restricting access to a building which may be of utmost importance to your group such as a medical facility, a building which is rich in base reinforcing resources, a weapons shop or even a group of survivors. However, there is also a chance that the horde may just be a horde passing by. Should you avoid them? Again, the game throws you into a crucial decision making process. You may choose to skip the horde and let them go free at this time, but there may come a time soon where you urgently need to go to that area where they are roaming. Whether this is to answer the call of a survivor in distress or you're on a sudden emergency trip to urgently get supplies. If you choose to leave this horde, you may falter and fail as a result in future. However, similarly, if you choose to face the horde, you may even die. Undead Labs have built in a permanent death feature in State of Decay, making it even more realistic. If you die in this game, you are dead for good and you will then take control of another survivor somewhere in the world. Therefore, this game really does force you into making decisions and weighing up the pros and cons of taking risks that could alter the future of that character in the game. Ask yourself, is it really worth going head on with a horde with a fruit knife and a pistol with 5 or 6 bullets? Probably not. However, if you are able to get your hands on a truck, then by all means run head in and play Hero Mill Dixon style. You will clear the area, raise your trust and influence levels with the group, and even potentially gain access to new areas which may contain a stockpile of useful resources which, once you take them back to the group, once again raise your trust and influence levels. Besides, you do not want to run the risk of the horde travelling closer and threatening your base, do you? There are an array of vehicles to choose from in State of Decay and all of them are priceless. Once you destroy a vehicle, that's it, it's gone for good. Therefore you have to use them very carefully. 
do not just use it to run across to the store a few miles away, but by all means, use it if you are going to be running across the entire map into uncharted territory and potentially find new groups of survivors and face zombie hordes along the way. Not only does the truck act as a good zombie splatting weapon, but if you do come across weary survivors, you can pop them in the car and take them back to your base, or again, leave them for dead after weighing up the pros and cons. It's entirely your choice. While the game does have a great storyline mode implemented into the game with plenty of rich undead content, once you start exploring the vast open world, meeting new survivors and making these tough decisions and start finding new ways to upgrade your base, it is very easy to lose countless hours just trying to survive. You will soon see that along with the main storyline that you can follow, you will inadvertently be building your own storyline along the way. This is something that is very unique to this game and I have yet to find another zombie game that implements a storyline building process such as State of Decay. It should be noted that State of Decay is currently a single player only game, but while a co-op version of the game does not yet exist, Undead Labs have stated that they may build a co-op version of the game in the future. This is also only available for the Xbox 360 console right now, but a PC version is also in development. In conclusion my friends, what we have here with State of Decay from Undead Labs is what I would go as far as to call the most complete, realistic and truly perfect zombie apocalypse survival simulation video game that there has ever been to date. It is great to look at with stunning visuals that bring to life the massive open world, even better to listen to with a flawless soundtrack to accompany your apocalyptic escapades, and with content limited only by the choices you make, the risks you take, and the route you choose to take down the undead highways from one end of the map to the other, State of Decay will certainly prove to be a game that fans of the zombie genre will fall in love with instantly and play for years upon years to come. Priced at a near 1,600 Microsoft points and easily standing as not only one of the best games of the 2013 year thus far, but also as one of the greatest zombie apocalypse games that has ever been released, Undead Labs have given us an absolute masterpiece in State of Decay. The game goes on sale on the Xbox Live Arcade on June the 5th 2013 and it is certainly not a game to be missed by anyone. Load up your Xbox, get into that marketplace and purchase this game like your life depended on it. I promise that you will not be disappointed with this, arguably the greatest zombie simulation game out there. Thank you for watching my review and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome zombie content. Until next time my friends, Wayne here for the Let's Play Tech Gaming Channel, saying goodbye.